thanksgiving and praise. Amen. It's not spectating. We didn't come to watch.
choirs and praise team. Praise God for helping us out today. We give God praise. Realize it's hot. Getting hot. But this is more of a prayer to a place that you don't want to end up in. Amen. Praise God. This is actually cool compared to a place which we don't want to even imagine. Go ahead. We want to give God praise today and give God Amen. honor. Amen. We want to honor our pastor, Pastor Lee. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Saints, praise God. The wife here. I just want to thank you, as I said on Wednesday night, for your prayers. When I had surgery a few weeks ago, God has been very gracious. Praise God. Thank God for my wife who has been helping taking care of me and praying for me real well. So I want to thank God for that. But before we go any further, just want to uh, just bow our heads for a moment. Praise God. The oh Lord our God, we thank you today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness. And thank you, Lord, for your grace upon us. And Lord, we just ask you to continue to uh, be with us, O oh God, and continue to give us your guidance, your wisdom, your grace each and every day. Thank you now for just, O oh God, being here in your presence to be able, O oh God, to Say a few things to your people. Ask, O oh God, for your grace, O oh God, your anointing, O oh Lord. And we just ask you to grant us your grace as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Praise God. No, we don't have a whole lot of time. Just to probably just take a few things and show it up a bit. Before we go further, I would like to um, recognize... Uh, some of our soldiers, praise God. You know, we're in a warfare. We're in a spiritual warfare. And just like this country, the 4th of July represents independence from the country of, anybody know where, where we're independent from? From Great Britain, from England. We too, as members of Christ's body, have an independence to celebrate as well because we were freed from where? From sin, praise God. And we are in the army of God. And I just wanted to just take about a minute or two and to recognize those, praise God. I know we have maybe some veterans here. We just want to say thanks if there are any veterans here that has fought for our country. But also, we have spiritual soldiers. I remember the time when I didn't go to war, but I wanted to. After I got out of college, I said, you know, maybe I should have gone there. I probably would have learned a few more disciplines. But nevertheless, I want to thank God because I'm in His army. Praise God. Anybody in the army of the Lord who has been in for at least 60 years... Hold your hand up. Anybody that has been on this battlefield for at least 60 years? Sister Jean. Sister Louise. Give my hand. 50 years. Anybody been battling for 50 years? Not how old you are. Have you been on the, in the Lord's army for at least 50 years? 40. Sister Marilyn, praise the Lord. At least 30. Smire, praise the Lord. Stay in. 20. Praise God. 10. Praise God. 5. Praise the Lord. 1. Who just got started? Praise the Lord. I want to say one thing. Just like in the natural army, God has a draft. And just like in the natural army, the draft dodgers. People that didn't want to fight. And maybe even here today, we have draft dodgers where God has placed his call on your life. And you're still dodging that call. My God, only you can answer.
answer that question. We don't want to be draft dodgers, neither do we want to be duty dodgers. Because you know, we can get in the warfare and deny or neglect our duty where we have been called to serve. Praise God. So we don't do, want to do any of those. Let's turn today to uh, the book of Exodus. Don't have a lot of time. We're just going to have to hurry through here, but praise, praise God. Let the Lord have praise. Well, I can do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Praise God. Book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody has that for me? I'm going to read for... Moses said, we shall be, and the Lord shall give you the two things. That's verse 8, 17. Exodus 17 and verse 8. Okay. He 
And there's another enemy we're going to look at in a few minutes. But I just want to say this. You know, one of the tactics of the devil is distraction. You realize that? One of his biggest tactics against you and I is distraction. Amen. Distraction. If he gets me to argue with my wife, he's got half the battle won because I have been distracted. Amen. See, she's not my enemy. That's right. When my kids act up and I go to fight them and fuss at them, the truth. he's distracting me. They're not my enemies. Are they? That's right. When brothers and sisters begin to attack one another, who's getting the victory? Who's going to victory? The devil is. Because see, we have missed who the enemy is. We label one another as the enemy. Don't we? We label each other as the enemy. And we forget they're not the enemy. They're only people that we think of. It's one of the greatest ways to distract us and keep us from winning the battle. Lord gave me a thought here. I had to think about this. See, today we fight with weapons. We fight with guns, automatic. What they call these things, Uzis and that kind of stuff, right? I, I, I'm, these, these fellas are laughing at me. I, I don't know much about that stuff. But they're weapons. But one thing I know about those weapons, you can squeeze the trigger to go tss, tss, tss. And in seconds, you have fired probably, I don't know how many bullets. 50? 50. And then if you have a uh, cart, what do you call that thing? A magazine or cartridge? You just flip that in and you got another 50, right? But think about it. If you got 50 and you fire 10, how many you got left? 40, right? So you can kind of fire around. But here's a, here's a problem. Back in the days of old when they only had arrows, you had to really be very, what? Careful about who you fired your arrows at. Because if you wasted them, when the real enemy showed up, you had nothing left. And oftentimes we fire our arrows at the wrong target. We fire them at each other. Or we can't shoot. Right? I fire mine against Tony, he fires back, and all of a sudden, we both are wounded, and when the real enemy comes, we have nothing left to fight with. And so it is within the body of Christ that we must remember there is but one enemy. So even when something happens that you may not like, rather than saying, that's my enemy, let's pray. Let's, let's hold up that person. Because the enemy is going to fire enough battles, enough things at us. He's going to fire sickness. He's going to fire a lot of things at us. And what we need to do, just like Joshua fought and Aaron and Moses held up Moses' hand, we hold up one another. If one member of the body is hurting, we go and we hold them up. If one is suffering, we go and we hold them up. Rather than taking it out on one another. Book of James, somebody grab that very quickly. James chapter 4 and 1 and 2, and we're going to finish up here. James chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. You got it? What's it say? 
come wars and fightings among them. Well, wait a minute. Where are the fightings and the wars coming from? Are they not against even your lust that your war in your members? All right. Another set of Amalekites today are whom? Our own lusts. You realize one of our greatest battles with ourselves? And the enemy will use our desires and our passions to distract us. You know, whatever, he knows what we like too. If you like chocolate, he's not going to give you vanilla. He's going to find a way to get you the chocolate. I'm not saying chocolate is bad, so don't go away saying I'm saying chocolate is bad. But whatever he can attach, and he knows that we like, and will keep us distracted, he will use it. He will use it. Because he's out to defeat us. That's why we're in... in in, we've been talking to our, you know, our young people and so on is to be careful don't get pulled into a lot of stuff don't get pulled into a lot of stuff even old people you know after we get old sometimes old soldiers think they know it all and we can't be trained anymore because we know it all right we know it all that's a danger. Always allow yourself for God to put more in you. Don't think that you know it all and you got it all and it's all wrapped up. Allow ourselves for God to put more in. Because see, the enemy's got a lot of strategies that he can bring to defeat us. But I just want to say this. In this warfare, we have but one enemy. That's the, end. that's the devil himself. And I would just say in closing, let's not fight where there is no war. Don't fight where there is no war. Don't fight where there is no war. You're wasting time. As I said, sometimes we think one another is the problem, and so we go to war. Our children are the problem, whatever, and we go to war, and we go to fight, and we're losing all this energy, and we're losing all this strength, and we're losing all of this time because we're fighting where there is no war. So in one place to fight. That's right. So Paul said, right? I don't fight as what? One that's just... Wasting bullets and, and strength. Don't fight where there is no war. God bless you.